416 on a happy Friday in the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios before the big holiday weekend. Eagles get the holiday weekend going in the right direction, though, with the win last night at Lincoln Financial Field, 24 to 19. And a man that does a great job covering the Eagles 365 days out of the year for PhiladelphiaEagles.com is Dave Spadaro, who I know is all fired up after the Eagles win last night. Dave, Zach Gelb, appreciate a few minutes, and thanks for coming on. How are you? I'm good, Zach. Happy holiday weekend to you. Hope all is well. Thanks so much. Happy holidays to you and your family as well. Last night, I know you don't want to get too overexcited about the win, but it was good to see and what's been a tough season for the Eagles, especially after the way that it started and you had all that hope in the beginning of the year. To you, what does that win mean last night to this football team? It means everybody feels just a teeny bit better this weekend. It means that they won a close game. They were 0-6 going into that game in one-score outcomes. It means that they are still playing really hard for their head coach. It means that they won a game in the NFC East after losing four games. And, you know, it means that, uh, that maybe this team can carry a little bit of momentum toward the end of the season here. A win over Dallas would be nice. Uh, ultimately, there's nothing beyond next Sunday, um, but it's, it just feels good to win. And it was a good football game, and I thought the Giants – Really, their approach was very, very interesting, throwing the football 63 times. And the Eagles were really patient defensively. And they bent and didn't break and ultimately get out of there with a victory. And I'll tell you one thing else it means for anybody who's listening who was there. Major kudos to Eagles fans. They were there. They filled the stadium. Every seat was filled. And they stayed till the very end. And it was loud and it was awesome. And thanks so much to Eagles fans. Now, I was in the building last night, and I don't have a dog in this fight, but, yeah, I was definitely encouraged by the support the Eagles fans did give last night, especially because you didn't know what that attendance would look like going into the game just being late in the year and the team not playing so great. And you take a look at that first few minutes of the game. The Eagles are up 14 nothing, Dave. Uh, that was the perfect start you wanted to see, especially when some have questioned the effort of this team in the last few weeks. Yeah, and they, that's the way they started the season when they played Cleveland and when they played Pittsburgh. And in Chicago, they, they played well in the first quarter, and they really haven't played well for most of the season in the first quarter. And this is a team that just does not have the firepower to come from behind. So, you know, that's part of the formula. Start fast and finish strong. And while the offense did not do that, they had six three-and-out series, which is just way too many. Uh, the defense, the, defensively, they were able to take the football away and at the very end there, seal the victory. Uh, when, on that first drive for the Eagles that resulted in a touchdown on the Darren Sproles run, in Section 103, everyone just started saying, wow, it's great to have Lane Johnson back. How do you think this season would have panned out if Lane Johnson didn't get suspended, Dave? Oh, I don't know. I mean, they probably would have won a couple more games. I, I don't know. It, it, it's it's a speculation game. It was a big loss for the Eagles. It was really difficult for the offense. The offensive line had played so very well as a fivesome for that first four games. And, um, you know, they lost the best right tackle maybe in the game. And that was a big loss. It really proved to be a bit of kryptonite for Carson Wentz. You mentioned the quarterback in Carson Wentz, only 13 completions last night. Had the injury scare as well, but is okay uh, as he came back onto the field and was able to return. Very elusive last night. I could count seven or eight plays when he escaped some pressure from that ferocious Giants front. Just what did you see out of Carson Wentz last night as he continues on in his progression? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been seeing that kind of escapability for the last several weeks here. The game seems to be slowing down for Carson and his – maneuverability in the pocket is something that I didn't expect. I mean, he's 6'5", 237 pounds. He's a really big kid. And he's clearly a tremendous athlete with really good feet. And he, he gives you that threat. And um, that's exciting because when the Eagles are able to surround him with some weapons, which they do not have enough of at the moment, it is, it is really uh, another threat for the defense when your quarterback has that kind of mobility. And when you can schedule in some read options into the into the mix, and when you can, when the protection breaks down, know that your quarterback could take off and really break the back of the defense. Um, 
uh, Carson is throwing to a, a, a group of receivers that garnered absolutely no respect from the Giants last night. They played eight in the box. They manned up on the outside. There wasn't much reason for the Giants to give a lot of help. So the Eagles just didn't win one-on-one battles with their receivers. So Carson's windows are really, really small. But I love the kid's toughness. I love his leadership. I think he's got a ton of talent. And I'm excited to see what kind of growth he makes from year one to year two. You have to love the quote that Malcolm Jenkins gave last night, and you could just tell that leadership and that passion is contagious in that Eagles locker room, and it gives Eagles fans a very bright future for they're going to continue to hope about this football team and to see what it eventually becomes. You mentioned the wide receivers. Clearly the leading receiver last night had three receptions, so nothing too fancy from the wide receivers, but Nelson Aguilar had a big 40-plus yard touchdown grab, and that was really his first big play since the Browns in week one. What went right for Nelson Aguilar last night, in your opinion? You know, it's interesting because he had the drop early, um, didn't hang his head, hung in there, somehow got behind the Giants' defense. I really don't know what – I haven't really gone back and looked at that play, so I'm not quite sure exactly what happened there. But then another, he made another play late in the game that people really don't talk about. The catch on the sidelines, a seven-yard gain that was initially ruled out of bounds, and then the Eagles challenged it, and it was deemed inbounds because he got his knee down. That was a big play, and it gave Caleb Sturgis a little bit of breathing room. Instead of a 48-yard field goal into the wind, he kicked a 41-yard field goal into the wind, and that gave the Eagles, a, I think, a 24-13 to lead at the time, something like that. That was really, really, really big. And uh, Nelson, you know, look, I, if he can just relax and play football, he, he runs good routes. He certainly doesn't have explosive or breakaway speed. He blocks well. He just hasn't caught the football well, and – it's been, you know, a couple of years running here. Uh, I don't look at Nelson and say, hey, can he ever be a number one receiver? I look at Nelson and say, boy, I, I hope he can be a productive player in this league and, and maybe for the Philadelphia Eagles in the near future. Dave Spadaro with us right now. With all that went on in the past with Aguilar, because my expectations for him are still very, very low, even though he had the big touchdown last night. Do you think there could be a day where he could become a viable receiver for this team, or is this thing just already too far and there's already too many negative opinions about him that I don't think that he could get out of this thing? What's your thoughts on that? You know, I mean, it's all, it's all on him. I mean, they're going to bring in receivers next year. It is a major priority to add pieces around Carson Wentz. So Nelson will be in training camp, and he will have a chance to win a job and get a lot of throws his way. It is all on Nelson, dependent upon his skills, his consistency, his work ethic. So can he do it? Yeah. Is anything promised to him? No. Is anything guaranteed to him? Absolutely not. But he'll have, he'll have opportunities, yeah. Wrapping up with Dave Spadaro, who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb Show, does a great job covering the Philadelphia Eagles for their team website. You take a look at the Giants' approach last night, throwing the ball 63 times. You knew they were going to get their yards. And then also, when you throw the ball 63 times, you knew turnovers were eventually going to occur. When you take a look at that Eagles defense and what they did when the ball got in their territory and the Giants were moving the ball and they were able to hold them for three, just what worked so well for that defense last night that they were able to force those turnovers and force the Eagles to the field goal attempts? You know, they made the, the, they made the Giants really work down the field. No plays over the top. The, the Eagles were really cognizant of making sure they didn't allow any of those great Giants receivers to get behind them and strike for an easy score. And then, and then they got just enough pressure on Eli, including on that last throw where he kind of threw it off his back foot and it was a wobbler, a bit of a duck, and... It didn't get to the end zone. It was only to the five-yard line. Um, they were patient. They they made the Giants work. And, you know, the big statistic for New York, when they look back at it, it's something that the Eagles have had trouble with all year. In the red zone, the Giants were one of five. They had one touchdown and five trips into the red zone. They dominated statistically. They ran the ball. They, they moved the ball up and down the field the entire game. Very similar to what the Eagles did in their game against Washington a couple of weeks ago, dominated statistically, controlled the clock. But in the red zone, you got to score touchdowns. And in this game, the Eagles scored touchdowns, the Giants kicked field goals, and there's your difference.
It definitely was a major difference. And specifically with Odell, he had 11 catches for a buck 50. You take those numbers any day, but they just didn't get him in the uh, in the end zone last night. When you take a look at the cornerbacks, how would you evaluate the job they did against Odell last night? I mean, they battled. They, they gave a cushion, um, but they battled. He was targeted 20 times, and he had 11 catches. And so that's not a terrible percentage for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they kept him out of the end zone, and that's the big deal. Uh, they were tenacious. You know, they really, really took the challenge and, and played up to it. And I thought they did a good job. Certainly good enough to win a game that the kind of game that they have lost all season. Now, Dave Spadaro, before we let you run, the best call last night actually wasn't from the great Mel Reese. It was from you. I just have to play this audio real quickly for our audience. The KC mascot in the backfield. Pat the Patriot looking, looking, throwing deep, a wobbler. It's caught for the touchdown. Is that a career highlight for you announcing those mascots last night, Dave? There's there's no question that that was a career <laughs> highlight. There's absolutely, I was so psyched to be the MC on the field for the halftime show, which was a group of uh, NFL mascots against the Philadelphia mascots. It was a, uh, it was a mess. It was no doubt it was a mess. Um, I think that the uh, Franklin, the dog, um, I, I don't want to say he was tanking, but he dropped like four <laughs> passes and uh, it, it went totally off the script and uh, it was crazy. But yeah, I, I Grace and I, had a lot of fun. You guys are good sports last night. Dave, always appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a great holiday. My pleasure. Happy New Year to you, and we'll talk to you soon.